Hello and welcome to Model Kit Stuff and welcome to the 1 to 72 scale De Havilland Mosquito build. Okay, we are back to step 16. I'm skipping 14 and 15 for a moment because I've still got some clean up work to do. I've got this little round piece to put in. So it's gone in lovely. And then underneath, we've got this bit here. Now, I'm not sure, but I think this is the bit that some people are telling me needs to be filled and smoothed and should be the same shape as the bulkhead at the back. So I'm going to have to do some research on that. And if I need to fill that up, then I'm thinking milliput's probably the best way to go. I can sculpt and shape that. Or possibly some like building up some plastic strips or something. Don't know. Don't know. Right. Now then. Let's have a look. At this, so we should go in right, that way. Right, so, So that's gone in nicely. We'll glue that side in. And I just want to put a little bit of glue on this mating joint. Make sure it doesn't get pushed out. That's good. Okay, that is our tail in. Um, so I'm happy with all of that. Um, so the next thing I want to do is look at cleaning this part up. So just test fitting it. We can't see inside there. So I mean, they're telling you to paint it in the interior green. But you just can't see it so it's a sort of a pointless exercise i think what i want to do is glaze this after we've painted it um, and then we can get in there and do paint the inside of the green from outside and then liquid glaze it so i'm just going to glue this in for now and then we're going to have to come back and fill that And we've got a little location peg to line up. Well, that's dropped into place okay. Right. 
Happy with all of that. Right. I just want to put a little bit of matte varnish over the tyres. That's just going to help protect it when we do a little bit of weathering. Um, sometimes Vallejo paints, if you handle them a lot, can rub off on some of the edges. So it's also just going to give it a protective layer and um, make sure we don't do any damage. With there being quite a lot of texture on this part, it's high risk we could do that. So. The exhausts are really clever. We have two different sides that marry up, so it makes it easy to paint them uh, before putting them together. And they have done this before Airfix, and it works really, really well. So they shouldn't present us with any problems when painting. I'm going to paint them on the sprue. So I think that will just be a nice, easy way of doing it. Okay, and there's just no cleanup on it. There's no seams or anything. So, yeah, happy with that. Okay, wheel hubs and exhausts are our last remaining metallic items, and I just want to give them um, a black prime before we uh, put top coats on. Um, that should then uh, give us some something nice to work with when we get to putting these sort of silver colours on. So we've got aluminium. And then on the exhausts, the instructions recommend uh, gunmetal, um, which you can see how that would work work well. But actually, I'm going to swap that out for AK's Extreme Metal Burn uh, Burnt Metal, which is like a pale um, matter, um, silvery colour with a, a just a hint of orangey brown, which gives it a nice sort of heated look which um, I think will look nice on the exhaust so that is the plan so easy to paint when these are done separately in this way really clever okay I'm going to use um, Tamiya's black panel line accent colour for um, just doing some highlighting on our landing gear. Um, just want to bring some of the detail out a little bit. Um, as always, I don't use the brush in the bottle because it's just way too big. Um, so I'm just going to use um, um, a, a tiny br uh, brush, put it on, and then I can always go around with a cotton bud uh, and lift some off if I think there's too much. So let's get that done. So I'm actually using Humbrol enamel thinners on um, a cotton bud just to tidy up our um, Tamiya panel line. Right, Pale Burnt Metal is the name of this colour. It's AK485 in their Extreme Metal series and it is lovely. 
for things like exhausts. Probably going to need two coats, but might get away with it. Unlikely, I think, but... We will uh, see how we get on, put a bit much on there. You can just slap this on if you're not airbrushing it. Um, it really dries back really well. It's an enamel, so be aware of that. Now our black primer is dried on our wheel hubs. We can get them painted in in the aluminium we're using, which is the MIG Metal Aluminium. Um, can be a little bit slow drying at times, particularly in the winter I find. Um, but right now we're at 27 degrees here locally, so um, my problem is getting the paint on before it dries more than uh, the drying time once it's on. So I'm actually going to start with the tail wheel because I've got some quite delicate painting to do there because it's moulded in the tyre and the hub and the, the uh, actual gear is all moulded in so I want to try and do this in one pass and that's my hope. So I haven't thinned this in the hope that certainly at the point where we're painting around the tyre I don't have to come back and put any more paint in. There's also a greater risk if it's thinner of it um, capillarying into places we don't want it so there's a, a matter of control as well. From a smaller part like this, not thinning the paint sometimes it really can be helpful. go that's come out okay um, so we're just painting the rest of it um, the actual leg itself um, one coat won't be enough and the paint's a bit thin for that larger paint surface really so I'm expecting to come back and put a much thinner coat of paint over the top just to even everything out okay so that is the tail wheel done Don't need to worry quite so much about these hubs. What I'm not going to do is paint the sides particularly um, because I imagine that the tolerance is quite tight and we've already added primer to it. So although I'm not going to worry if it does go over, I'm not going to purposely try and do a uniform coat if that makes sense. That will need one more thin coat. We'll just let that dry for a bit. And then we'll thin down the paint that we've got in there um, and give it a second coat. I've given the wheel hubs um, 
a little going over with the panel line accent colour. Um, they look a lot darker on camera than they actually are. Um, let's see if I can improve the light here. Yeah, so anyway, uh, what I want to do now is just go back over them, uh, dry brushing with the aluminium paint, um, just so that we can get the detail to pop out a little bit more. Okay, time to put our hubs into our wheels. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of glue just on the inside of the rim in a couple of couple of places. I don't want anything oozing out over the sides effectively, and I don't want anything going too heavily into the middle either. So it's a bit more of a delicate operation than it might initially seem. But it's a job for contactor, definitely. Let's see what I'm doing then. It's a lovely fit. Just make sure it's all pushed in properly. Yeah. That looks really good. Pleased with that. First wheel done. Okay, we've got four holes to drill. Um, they're one millimeter holes and that allows us to add the um, drop tank underneath. So they've kindly left us some nice recessed holes that we just need to fill out. Obviously, if you don't want to put the uh, uh, drop tanks on, then just leave them. Okay, so that is our hose drilled. Um, the next thing is to put the little glass part in the uh, in the wing. And what we're going to do is we're going to put them in, and then we're going to mask it um, with some mascal. Um, I think, rather than messing around cutting masks and that sort of thing. So we want part H eight. So any clear glue will do to put this in. I'm using ultra glue purely because I've got it um, and I need to use it up. So, um, but anything that dries clear or is non-gassing. Um, There we go, yeah, and that's gone in okay. And I'm just going to put a little bit on the join around the edge there, just to make sure that we are belt and braces, which is how I like it. Right, while those glass parts are just drying, we can take off the upper wing and clean them up, ready for putting them together. And that is the end of our bee sprue. Okay, time to see if these wings fit together. So let's see. Yeah, well, that goes together really nicely.
that's not supposed to join together we've got a radiator grill type thing to go in there it's a little bit of wiggle in the in the part but it's a tiny amount now this one's not fitting quite as well so you can see there there's a little bulge and the two parts are being forced apart I'm not quite sure what that is that's causing that. Because there isn't a pin in that location. Right, well, we will have to peg it. Right, I'll get the pegs and we'll get ready to rumble. So I'm just going round the um, surface, the inside surface of these wings. Where we've got some ejector pin marks, we get a little bit of a raised sort of burr. And I'm just taking all of those off to make sure there's nothing causing a fit issue because we know we've got some areas that aren't sitting um, aren't seating quite as tightly as we'd like so because um, we're using um, a hot glue that should actually help as well but um, anything we can do to ease the process at this stage is good and it's the same on this female side making sure that we've got no raised burrs around these um, location points We've actually got, I hadn't noticed this, but this is an erased objector pin here. So I need to deal with that. All the others are sunk, so I assume that was, so I haven't looked at it closely. So it's a good job of checking. Okay, I think that should do it. Right, so let's get some glue on that and see how we get on. So you'll notice that I've uh, clamped before I've put the glue in. Well, hopefully, that should be okay. We've not got, we've not got any big gap issues or anything like that where we need to sort of put lots of glue in. So a little bit of extra thin quick setting should be enough and there's no guidance in the instructions as to the color to paint this bit here so you can see the little groove there that's where we've got a, a like a radiator to go in so between the front of the radiator and the um, leading edge of the wing we've got this surface so is that painted in the cockpit green or is it painted in the um, upper fuselage colour? I have no idea. So I'm just going to have to make that up as I go. Um, and I think my thought process is do it the fuselage outer colour. Um, it just makes it easier to touch up. So I don't know how accurate that will be, but I think that's what we'll do. Right, next thing is to add the wing tips, which are clear. So let's have a look at that. Now the, uh, the part that we need to have as glass is sufficiently far away that we can actually glue that joint. Um, with ordinary glue without worrying about it. So let's do that. Okay. It's a nice idea that. Mm. 
Right, so let's get, make sure we get the right one. So this one has the P. There we go. It's nice and easy, isn't it? We'll clean up the knob when we go around and tidy up the edges. Right, while our glue is drying on our wings, we can move to the next step. So step 35 is putting together the exhaust that we painted up a little earlier. Um, and they're now fully dry. Still need a little bit of work, but it's only uh, some minor stuff, which we can do later on in the build. But right now they want us to put them into their um, homes ready for installation. So the first wing, which is the port side wing, is wanting F9. So we'll take that off and the part you'll notice has arrows on it um, and that's indicating um, as per the instructions how that installs into the engine so that's, that's really cool. I'm sure I've seen them do that before and I can't remember what it was on um, but I have seen them do that before. Might have been the. Um, no, I can't remember. Might have been on the Hellcat, but I could equally be making that up. Right. So we have our F9. We need 26 and 27. Six and I'm not sure which one twenty seven is, so think looks like that is the mating part. So the way these work is they interlock to give you the full set of six exhausts, like so. It's really cool. And then they sit in there um, like that. So I think I'm going to glue these together first. And I've wiped most of the glue off this, so there's only a little bit bonding that. And when you look at it, it's actually wedge-shaped. So that then is going to go in there like so. So the question I have to ask myself is how am I going to paint that? So if that goes in that way around, and then that goes in there like that. I mean, that looks great. But I've got no way of painting around that. Right, let's have a look a bit further down the construction. Yeah, 
So, let's just have a look at the paint instructions. So my engine nacelles are completely black except for a strip on the top which is actually this bit on the wing so I'm wondering if I can paint them separately and install them separately problem is I'm not sure <laughs> should be able to build that and whilst it's in its built condition put the exhaust in from each side after it's been painted then install it yeah we're going to try that so we're going to build this up and we're going to paint it then we're going to install the exhausts okay But that doesn't prevent us from gluing this in now. What I'm interested to see is how much of the exhaust is actually visible once it's installed. Yeah, see quite a bit, and there's no way you're going to paint under there you could if you mask it you're not painting all of the fuse like it's that is difficult so I think it's the only way we're gonna do it it's the only way we're gonna do it right okay so let's glue that in place Okay, we've got a few um, extra parts that we need to put on to um, the engine uh, nacelle, which has come together um, really quite nicely. Other than I've managed to glue the spinner in, um, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. It's not that I sit there spinning the propellers anyway. So um, we'll just position it the way we want. Um, so yeah, I think I have a plan now. What um, what I should say is I have um, tried to fit the exhausts once that spinner's in, and yes, you can. Uh, now, I mean, the other thing you can do is obviously fit them now, paint the whole thing, and then paint the exhaust tips that are sticking out. But you'll have only painted about the first third of the uh, exhaust, and when you look in, it'll either look black or you'll see plastic either way for me that's not right so I, I can't do that um, but I know other people would and I've even seen other videos where they've done that um, so right anyway our engine nacelle has gone together really nicely um, got a little bit of work on the scene to do um, tiny tiny amount but before I do that I want to just put everything else in so we're doing everything at once and the first thing to go in is this little small piece at the front which has got the air intake on it now this mosquito is in the newer harder plastic that uh, Airfix has been using and I've got to say I'm really enjoying using it I am finding it really good plastic Wow, that just clips in. Okay, let's get that glued in. There you go. 
no issues with that fit at all. Okay. Then we've got these two little small pieces, not quite sure what they are. Now this bit here, interestingly, is sort of um, another air intake, I think, that's underneath. Um, there's two different types on the sprue, so clearly they have different variants in mind. Or did have when they were engineering it, so that's really cool. Because I definitely wouldn't mind building this again. Again, that goes in nicely. You can see why this has been moulded as separate parts. Just there's a, a little detail on the end of them that I think they would have struggled to put in if they'd moulded it all in one. So next we've got these two parts. Um, Hmm. That's the first one. And I think in real life there's a, a separate um, piece of mesh that sort of sits distance from the front of it. I'm sure if you were to buy um, Edward's update set for this, um, you'd find it's in there. It's quite a prominent thing, but there's no way they could really do that in plastic. together lovely as well and that sits in there like that and wow so that is really really nice too love it okay so that is the engine cell um built up if unlike me i'm gonna have the landing gear out if you wanted to have the um landing gear up then you need to cut these off um to fit the um the doors and you'd fit the doors now um but i am going to fit this really clever mask instead now they've used this system again on their uh New 148 Buccaneer, same designer. Um, it's such a good idea. We yet to see anybody else copy it, but everyone should because it's a brilliant idea. Okay, let's, let's see what happens. So the idea is this just clicks into place. Brilliant. So I can now spray paint all of this outside surface and that is protected. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. So if that's attached to your wing like so you can see how you can paint all of that what i want to do is paint them separate um, so that i can paint um, the top 
colors separately um, and then we'll mask the top attach the um, engine nacelle and paint the rest of it but i'm going to paint the front of the engine nacelle first in the black um, and then i can put my exhausts in separately so that is my plan now whilst i have the wing in my hand we have this um, grill to go in so let's just look at that So there's a particular way this goes in. Uh, again, they've used the arrow system. And basically it's narrower at one end than the other. Oh, okay. I didn't realise until you put it in you don't you don't realise that it's actually sat on a slight slope, it's angled. Okay, so let's glue that in. Make sure that's in place. So the grill needs to be black, the lower surface of this needs to be black. Um haven't got an idea as to whether the um, inside should have been cockpit green like I said so I'm going to go with the upper surface colours um, on this upper face there we go and again the fit is phenomenal. So I'm not going to glue them in now, but just out of interest, now we've built up this um, wing. Let's just see how it fits together. <laughs> like a dream is the answer. Like a dream. Yeah, so as I hold that in, uh, what I can see is there's a gap nowhere, so that's really nice. Now what they need to do is create another one of these masks that you can put on there, so you can put your can canopy on separately. Right then. I'm going to build up this second engine nacelle um, and then I'll come back to you when um, that is done um, because you've seen me do that now so you don't need to see that again um, and then we'll have a look at what's next as we get this ready for paint. Okay, time to try and paint the straps onto our pilot. Going to do that off camera. So that's our strapping done, our life preserver. Both of these are enamel paints as well, um, just because that's what I have in my stock. It's pale yellow, um, which is number 81, uh, Humbrol number, uh, and then 28, which is, I forget the name, um, but that's your two colours. So we've just got the um, skin to do and the um, helmet now. He's telling me that the, that his hands should be skin. I would have thought they wore gloves. So I'm going to check that out before I paint the skin. And then of course we've got the black boots to do. Okay, propellers now. And I'm lucky that um, on the version that I'm doing, the spinner is black same as the propellers although i'll probably put different varnishes on to to make them look a little bit different um so i can build it all up and paint it 
paint it as one pretty much um, what I want to show you was the actual propeller blades now uh, the sprue gates are on the blades and most people will know that I dislike that I prefer it to be connecting in the middle so that our, our blade is um, nice and clean already and we don't really have to touch it other than seam removal um, but what they've done here is usually the sprue gate is a massive blob that drowns out all the surfaces and you by eye trying to line it all up and thin it down but what they have done here is they have left some of that lining so it's much easier to clean up I've got to say the propeller blades themselves feel a little bit chunky now I don't know whether that's right or not um, but it's certainly helping with getting the sprue gates off so I'm going to start by just removing as much of the gate as I can which I can do easily because we can see that line Actually, when you do that, it takes off almost all of your uh, sprue gate then, so there's hardly any cleanup then. I will go around all of these parts before we paint and just check that we've got no uh, seams or anything that we've missed. So um, I always do that. I always do a last check before we put any primer on because it is easier to clean it up before we've primed. But then priming will often show us something we've missed or need a little bit further work on. Um, when you're working on just the plastic, it can deceive the eye and you can think you're done when you put some primer on and you're clearly not done. Okay, so how this works is you can see there's a, a, a key and we have a backing plate that has a matching key and that pops into the back there so that you've got um, these bits here nicely lined up so these are that's part of the back plate of the spinner so it's really clever actually how they've done that if it works just a couple of attachment points to clean off okay just push that in yep, that goes together lovely And then the spinner, unfortunately they didn't put the gates on the back end, it's on the surface so got a little bit of careful clean up to do there. Just got two points that we need to clean up so nice and easy okay and then that and that goes together really nicely got to say this is one of the best engineered kits i've ever built not and i don't mean by airfix by anyone it, it is such a nice kit to build really nice
Now you can see on the back of the spinner there, we've got this re recess location point. Um, and that fits into there. Um, and then you've got your nice spinny propeller. And uh, let's just test that. Yeah, that fits in nicely and it holds it nice and snug to the engine nacelle. That is really nice as well. Really well thought through. Cool, that's our propellers done. So our next step is the Bombay and we've already painted much of this. Um, now I'm intending to have the Bombay open so I'd missed step 93. However, um, my thought process is that we can take that part, clean it up, plop it in um, and use that as a paint mask for the Bombay as well. We've already painted those parts and they're weathered so they're just ready for installing. Same with those parts there. Um, and We've done those parts. Um, we have a little bit of work to do on the Bombay doors, but otherwise we are good. So, I don't want to install any of this until we've painted the fuselage. So I'm gonna remove that and we'll add that as a, as a separate. And then we're on to ordnance and Bombay doors, so they're ready for paint. Drop tanks, so they're ready for paint. Um, and then I need to get the pilot finished and in his cockpit um, to put the glass on. And then there's this G12, the very last bit, um, which goes on there and um, we need to put that in. And then we're ready for painting and then we can go back and do final assembly. Now, when it comes to the Bombay doors and the shape of the back of the fuselage, I'm talking about this bit here, I'm being told and I've seen pictures that this should be totally smooth and going all the way blended into the hull and should be one complete lump without these cutouts. Similarly, all this detail that is on the Bombay doors relates to this modification and on this version shouldn't be there that should actually be totally smooth um, that's got something to do with the with the uh, trailing devices that they were that, that they made the modification for and that's got something to do with strapping it all together so I'm being told and I've been told by more than one person independently that that's an error because when they've scanned the model uh, or the actual aircraft in the museum, that one's got the modifications, which I was told by one of them was a post-war modification. Now, I don't know enough about it. What what I know about aircraft, you could write on my thumbnail. Um, if it was a ship, I'd have a much better idea. But if it's not a ship, then I'm building a model because I like the look of it. I'm not deeply immersed in the history of aviation um, you know, I, I know the basics, but I don't know the details. And my problem is, um, I've seen pictures of different shapes when it comes to um, the Bombay, and I don't know what's right for this variant. And what I don't want to do is make a modification and change it from being wrong to being wrong. So, Having given it some thought, I've decided I'm going to leave it as it is. Airfix clearly thought that this was correct, and so I'm going to build this as Airfix intended, rightly or wrongly, um, because the point of the exercise for me is to have some fun building a model, um, not necessarily to make the perfect representation of it. Now I know for some people that means that it'll be wrong, um, but you know, I'm just having fun building the model and that's what it's about. So, 
Um, let's get that Bombay in and mast off. So if Airfix have um, dropped a clanger, it does mean they can make a model of that specific that specific one in the museum and then they can put that in the museum shop. Winner, winner. Right, let's see how this fits. Still got some clean up to do on this before we can take it to paint. The fuselage, I should say. Well, that clips in tightly. Very tightly. Yeah, we will get it out again, but only just in fact. We don't want it to drop out, but at the same time, we don't want it to be there forever. When we put all that effort into making that look quite good. There we go, that should cover that all off nicely. So that's our Bombay doors. And now we've got a little bit of filling to do uh, and a little bit of scene clean up that I can see. Um, so still got a little bit of work and there is a little bit of sink um, here and here. So we have got a little bit of filling to do. Now when it comes to the bombs, um, I've made a decision that what I'm actually going to do is not put a full payload in because um, we've got lots of detail in there that just get masked away once once they're in. So we could leave it completely empty, but I would like to show um, some ordnance in there. So I'm going to put half the payload in. Now, I, I'm not decided yet whether I'm going to put two next to each other or opposing corners so that you can see the detail through there. Um, I, I may well do opposing corners. Um, it, it, it depends on... Um, what you can and can't see so we'll have a plate on the time so i'm only making up two of these 